You go to uh, the Carolina Panthers, number one overall. Your debut game, you throw for 422. I think the next game, you throw for 423. First rookie to have back-to-back 400-yard passing days. Fastest player to throw 4,000 yards. Still a record. Set a single season rushing record for quarterback, rushing touchdowns. Uh, first, first quarterback, I think you're the first quarterback to throw for 4,000 yards. Rookie to throw for 4,000 yards also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> first player in NFL history to have at least five rushing, dust, five rushing touchdowns and five passing touchdowns in the first five games. Name rookie of the year. And you were number... Two in college. Somehow you end up with number one. You the first pick in the draft. That was, they held number one. When you came out there and got that jersey, you had number one. Mm-hmm. What happened to the number one jersey? I really didn't want to be number one. I mean, number, yeah, what happened to the number one jersey? Why you didn't get that? Jimmy Clausen. You, hey, you got a big, big bang take, little bang. Hostile takeover. Yeah, he tried to. Yeah. Tried to hustle you. He tried to finesse you, didn't he? He tried to jug a jug. I'm from Atlanta, bro. I'm a, bro. I'm a finesse. And when I felt like he was finessing, see, that goes back to the thing that made me great, my mentality. When Jimmy Clausen charged me a million dollars for my number, I said that would be the last. Why don't you just go to the equipment manager? No, it's, it's, it's proper protocol. Even the equipment manager said, hey, the person who has number two, you got to work out a deal with him. So I went direct to the source. That's how my dad raised me. I ain't have no problem with uncomfortable conversations. But it was comfortable for me. And when I felt that he was trying to play me, that took over to say, we will never hear Jimmy Clausen again in Carolina. So you made sure he going to get up. Got, that was the chip on my shoulder. And that's that's how that's what made me who I was. How much would you have been willing to partake to get that number? I would have donated a hundred thousand to his foundation or whatever to him. I don't yeah. care. When he hit me with a million, I thought it was joking, and I said I've been public with saying that. I'm like a million. I was waiting on the light. Nah, man, I'm just playing. I said, all right, cool. We hung up the phone. He calls me back like an hour later and was like. Man, I was just talking to some representatives of mine, and uh, we'll do seven hundred and fifty thousand. I said, "Oh, you for real?" I said, "Bro, mothers don't even make a million dollars in a lifetime where I'm yeah. from. You think I'm about to give you a million dollars for a fucking number?" But I say less. I mean, a meal. I mean, I bought a bass boat. I thought that was pretty. I got a pretty good deal. Man. I traded with a, a Frank Re- uh, Wainwright. Freaky Frank. Mm. I asked him, say, you got any hobbies? Because I wanted 84. Mm-hmm. Jermaine Lewis had 84. I offered him, his, he and his wife, Rolexes. He said, nah, I kind of want to keep the Okay, fine. Went to Frank, uh, Frank Wainwright because he was with me the year before in Denver. And I was like, man, he's like, nah, Sharpie, you can take it. I said, nah, bro, I don't want to just take the number I get. He's like, I said, what's your hobby? He said, man, I fish. Mm. Bought him a bass boat. I got 82, he got a bass boat, hopefully he still got it. Mm. But I don't, I, and I get, I get what you're saying, you know, it's your number, you had it. I don't want to just big big up you and just take the number. How we make it work? Man. But bro, you ain't fit, you ain't fit to hustle me now. It went, my energy changed. I was trying to be a good teammate. Yeah. And that's all I needed. You know, as a competitor, you don't yeah. need too much you, to, nah, nah, nah. to, Hell to nah. get going. Hell no. Nah. It's one of them, you, you can say something wrong to me and I'll be, is that really how you feel? Because when I look, out of out of you, and I'm going to have my discerning things. Like, oh, 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 he for real. Yeah. I said, don't worry about it. And at that particular point in time, it went from becoming the best player to ever play for Carolina. Then it was like, I'll, you will never hear Jimmy Clausen's name as long as I'm here. And that was my first duty to, to, to kind of conquer. Yeah. You wanted, to, you wanted to race Jimmy Clausen from the Alexicon. Don't even. Anybody? Bruh, Yes. Cause I felt played, and you're not gonna you're not gonna finesse me. Right. What you think this is? And that's all I needed. Right. He, he turned me, uh, as the kids say, they teed me up. Right. You dig what I'm saying? Like, and and that's just what it was. And I can see how he felt. It was like, yo, they took me with the pick, the first pick. They 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 didn't have no first round picks, mm-hmm. the year before. Mm-hmm. He was the first pick of the draft in the second round. Mm-hmm. He's supposedly to be the franchise, franchise quarterback. quarterback. It didn't go so well. But I'm telling you is, if the Carolina Panthers have the first pick, chances are they'd have a good season. So 
he was in that realm of trying to be insubordinate or trying to make it hard or whatever, and that's fine. That's cool. Don't try to do that with me. And the crazy thing about that, the following year, after I chose number one, he went to number seven. So now number two was, is, a, is available. Is available. Why did, why did he go to number seven? I don't know. He, that was his college number, his high school number. I don't know. But now that man really tried to finesse you, can he go get oh man. You get what I'm saying? See, that's where it was like, these are the things behind the scenes that people don't really know what get you going. You see what I'm saying? So I was like, man, bro, who the flea you think you is? Oh, you gonna around to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think this? You gonna find out today. When you got there, you had a guy that was a, a, a star in his own right, Steve Smith Sr. Yes, sir. One of the best receivers. He was a triple crown winner, one of the best receivers. For his size, pound for pound, mm -hmm. I don't believe there's a better receiver to ever play the game than Smitty. Yes, sir. What did you take from Smitty? What was his? Because I, I know him off the field. So what was what was he like as a teammate? Great teammate. But just like Luke Keekley, when Smitty was on the field, get the fuck out of his way. <laughs> he was a pit bull. And that's what I took from him. Now, you have to understand who Smitty was. And if I could go back and change things, Smitty wanted to win yesterday. <laughs> and, and he knew as a business what taking a young quarterback, that means we're, we, we are um, rebuilding. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to rebuild. He wanted to win. And I can't take that away from Smitty. And we bumped heads, you know, because he felt – the transitioning of the team to kind of go to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And I can't fault him for that. If I had to change things, I would wish to have had Smitty my fifth year. Because now we can talk. We can have grown man conversations. And I don't think a lot of people understand what that's like, going into an NFL locker room at the age of 21, 22. Because we got all these veterans. Bro, I had. And you got to lead them. I had John Beeson. I had Thomas Davis. I had... Jordan Gross, Ryan Khalil, these older guys was l l like leaning in for a rookie at the age. I didn't know. I, I went from a locker room where all my players that shared the field with me were my peers. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, man, what we going to play? At, the end, at that time, they had NCAA. Like, what, you know, we're going to go play mad and we're going to go get 25 cent wings at the spot. We're going to go bowling. Man, when you go into the NFL locker room, hey, we're going to try to go bowling. Oh, man, it's date night for me and my wife. Mm -hmm. Now nah, I got to go pick up my kids from the daycare. It's Friday. I ain't got time to. These are family men. These ain't no. You talking to a guy that's 38, approaching 40, 35, 32. What they got in common with a 21-year-old? Gen Z ain't mixing with no yeah. millennials. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Like all these baby boomers in that locker room, right. they ain't trying to. You feel me? So that's that's what the disconnect was. And I learned so much from Smitty because even though he was aggressive on the field, great teammate. Still to this well, during the time, he never wanted to have his own room on the on the on the, uh, on the road. He would always room with a younger player so that they, they he could teach them the preparation, what it was like. Wow. And I always respected that about him. Gave the best gifts. Heart of gold, but on that field, <laughs> bruh, sh a shark. If he if he sensed any blood, oh boy, he in, this, in practice, walkthroughs, or anything, man, Smitty coming after you, bro. Five nine with a soul of a six four night. <laughs> I said it, but it was Smitty that he was describing. <laughs> Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before to something.